Okay, this is a barbershop place here, but it's nighttime, so it's shut down. And notice how there's some legs exposed in the window. You'll see that walking by. That's a telltale sign right there. You'll see a piece of leg, um, so they say, in the window. And sometimes there'll be a girl out front, but if it's going to be a barber shop that's shut down at night and working as a brothel or a takeout place for um, ladies of the night, they won't usually have somebody standing outside because it's too dangerous to get shut down there. Okay? Maybe it's a foot massage place that shuts down at night and at 1 a.m. nobody's going to get a foot massage. So that's how it works and that's the obvious thing about China and the rest of Asia that uh, it's a fact of life and the world's oldest profession still thrives despite uh, rhetoric from the government and efforts to shut down prostitution. Now they've done a very good job of it. I won't take, a, take anything away from them there. They've actually put the effort forward and done a lot, uh, especially in the, the cities that have the biggest problems with it. But um, there's just too many people here. There's too many people that uh, are unemployed or need the black market, the vice market, and they need to get paid. They need to support themselves. China's a big country. Not enough jobs. Possible for there to be enough jobs to have full employment. So basically, that's what they do. The vice trade pays, and that's important to remember. Everybody gets paid in the vice trade, and I'm not condoning it, but the black market thrives. It's um, you know an element of organized crime sometimes, and sometimes it's not. Like this place here, it's a massage place, but I know for a fact that they have other services in there. The barbershop girls. Now this is significant to know because this is also the same in Korea and Japan. Barbershops may be legitimate during the day, but at nighttime they turn into uh, full-scale brothels. And you'll know this because uh, during late night no one is getting their hair cut, yet they're still open with the sign, the light's still on, and through the window you'll see girls that are sitting outside or next to the window showing what can be best described as a piece of leg and if uh, a gentleman were to walk in they would uh, get questioned as to what services they're looking for now this this uh, barbershop here is actually cutting here now and next door um, there's some girls that are waiting for customers I mean these days it can get a little confusing you know judging by the way that um, you know females dress today uh, they dress very provocative so you don't know which ones are the ladies of the night so to speak or which ones are non-working girls and then there are the street walkers some of them have pimps and some of them do not most of them do not because they can work at a massage parlor with mama san and they can get um, a uh, much better go of it per se but it does happen and especially in the coastal cities of course it makes it much easier if the establishment is already a massage parlor or a spa or a sauna simply because they can operate as if they normally would as a as a functional business giving um, legitimate massages and foot massages and things like that but really uh, it could be a cover for the additional services that they get and the um, exchanges for gentlemen who want escorts or want something a little bit different and that's what usually happens uh, especially near the railway stations is that uh, legitimate businesses like this that are difficult to shut down will have extra services or uh, after hours services with some of the girls and most of the time the boss does know about that but at, at, at occasion on times the girls operate independently and separate uh, and they get their contacts through the business.